And after that budget is handed down tomorrow, the New South Wales Treasurer, Daniel Mookie, will join me live at 3pm on Afternoon Agenda. It'll be his first live television interview after delivering his first budget. That's me with Daniel Mookie live 3pm tomorrow. Before that, though, with the budget build in full swing, I spoke a short time ago with the Shadow Treasurer, Damien Tudorhope, where I began by asking what he expects out of tomorrow's budget. It's hard to know how, how this budget is going to play out. The government has made lots of announcements in respect of uh, potential uh, funding arrangements that have been much less clear about where the money is coming from in respect of um, wage rises, uh, where it is coming from in relation to uh, debt reduction. Uh, so uh, what I expect from this uh, budget tomorrow is potentially uh, at least to outline some answers uh, to many questions that people are asking in respect of is what, it's all very good to make announcements but in many respects it's much more important to be able to say where is the money coming from to be able to meet those commitments. Now we reported yesterday there'll be a big reduction in net and gross debt in the budget. Did your government overdo it on spending when you had projection, projections of $114 billion in net debt by 25-26? Well, um, I, I think that's a bit unfair in, in one sense because the credit rating agencies all said that we were, uh, in fact, uh, a manager of money in such a way that we would get AAA credit ratings from at least two of the agencies and a double A plus from the third agency. Uh, we were project projecting surpluses in 25 26. So, although uh, we, in fact, uh, certainly were ambitious in uh, relation to delivering infrastructure. We did so in a way where the, all, on all the objective standards, uh, the uh, measure was that we could handle debt properly. We were proper managers of money for the purposes of de delivering uh, budget outcomes and at the same time delivering improvements for everyone. So uh, I think it's unfair to say that we... Uh, uh, we're, we're ambitious to the extent of reckless, as you suggest. Uh, I think we were ambitious for the purpose of people of this state to make sure that we uh, delivered infrastructure but at the same time maintained budget integrity. Well, after Mike Baird sold the electricity poles and wires, there was a net debt position of zero net debt. So it looks like the Coalition's Correct. legacy on Correct. this has been and trashed, hasn't it? Because if you're going up to $100 billion, well, uh, if, you, if you pay the wages of just about every employee in the state during COVID, if you have disasters of the extent that we did in respect of floods and bushfires, and you, in fact, commit the, uh, the state to uh, underwrite uh, people's losses in relation to those uh, disaster events, and there's no, no suggestion that we shouldn't, then, of course, we are going to incur debt as a result of unforeseeable circumstances. But where we have landed is, in terms of a proportion of GSP, we're about half of what Victoria is. So their spending and their ability uh, to deliver productivity outcomes is about twice what it was uh, in New South Wales. So uh, on all the objective indicia of managing economies, New South Wales was the best place to be able to continue economic prosperity and at the same time manage a budget. But I get it. Uh, we would have had to have done similar budget repair. Uh, if you do have unexpected uh, impacts on uh, your budget, you do have to fix it up. It's like any house that has unexpected, household that has unexpected expenditure. You've got to do something and rein in expenses. All right. Well, just on that, what do you make of some of the hard decisions they've announced? Active vouchers, electric car rebates, dumping all them. Do you expect any alterations or dumpings of metro projects tomorrow? Uh, I don't think they'll make that announcement. I don't think they'll announce any dumping of uh, projects like uh, metro. They've made some announcement of dumping of projects like uh, um, Powerhouse and a few things like that. The, they, they are conducting a whole series of reviews in relation to other projects. I anticipate uh, that they will try and push those projects out uh, so the delivery of those projects will be uh, potentially delayed. Um, but I, at, at the end of the day, the projects that the, or the things or programs they've said that they will 
cut uh, cost of living measures. But, uh, Andrew, the, 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 the most important thing is this, though, is where we are at the moment in relation to unfunded wage commitments is before the election, the, the government said that wage uh, commitments would be met by productivity outcomes. Now, they have not identified one productivity outcome, and yet we now are up to $7.6 billion of unfunded wage commitments to the union or the public sector unions. Now, the only promises I think you can expect the government not to break tomorrow are the ones that they've made to the union. So uh, $7.6 billion, think about that, of unfunded wage commitments uh, in respect of the demands made by, um, by the union. So uh, where we are in many respects in terms of budget credibility is, is that this is a budget uh, for the union movement, not necessarily a budget for the future of this state and the vision uh, which I think the previous government had in spades in terms of renovating the state. I understand your point on that. I just wonder, though, wasn't it a bit hard to retain the wages cap given what we've seen happen with inflation and private sector wages are going higher than that wages cap? Well, uh, of course, we would have had uh, the wages cap. Yeah, wages cap was a great tool for the purposes of being able to predict where you would be uh, at, at, at some stage in the future. When you do the forwards, you like to know what your uh, forward estimates in relation to budget. You'd like to know what it's going to be in the forward years. This, the manner in which Labor conduct their budgets, in term, in many respects, is. We don't know uh, what it's going to cost in the forward years and, and that means that, that what we are going to have tomorrow is a movement where 39.1 per cent of budget expenses under the previous government was what we spent on public sector expenses. Under this government, the suggestion is it's going to go as high as 47 per cent. Now, that's at least a 20 per cent increase in our commitment to public sector wages. Now, that's the great problem which uh, Labor have tomorrow, and it's really the reason why cost of living expenses have got to be cut. Don't say it's in, in because um, uh, there are unfunded uh, other things. There, there are only one big thing which has uh, really risen in relation to this budget is the commitment to the union's demands.